Hello and welcome to this course on Ansible Fundamentals. My name is Mumshad Manambeth and I work as a solutions architect. I have been using Ansible for automation in my solutions and it is a great tool that is easy and can save you a lot of time. This is a hands-on beginner's guide to Ansible. When I started learning Ansible first, all I could find was the Ansible documentation which we will look through and I had to have access to a system with Ansible installed on it to do and understand various concepts. Some of the concepts took a little bit time for me to get around. So I put together this course for the absolute beginner. You really don't need to have access to a system with Ansible or an environment setup to learn Ansible. Well, it's always good to have, and I would strongly recommend to set up a real system to put your knowledge to action. But what I'm trying to say here is that this course provides coding exercises where you will be developing Ansible playbooks right in your browser, and we will test to see if they are done right. So it's literally hands-on and a great way to start learning Ansible. So how exactly does this course work? This course contains lectures on various topics followed by some coding exercises where you will practice writing Ansible playbooks. You will be developing Ansible playbooks for different use cases, which will give you a pretty good idea on how to start developing using Ansible and get a lot of things done in a short amount of time and make your work more productive and collaborative. So what are we going to cover in this course? We will get started with understanding what Ansible is and what it can do. This is for those who have no idea what Ansible is and what it can do for us. So we will spend some time understanding that. We will go through how to set up Ansible in your environment. And this is only if you wish to set up Ansible now. You can skip this and head straight into developing playbooks. And, and later on, when you're confident enough, come back and um, uh, look at this again. Then we will get started with an introduction to YAML because uh, YAML is the coding language for Ansible. All Ansible playbooks are written in YAML. If you already worked with YAML, feel free to skip over that module. If not, get your hands dirty with some exercises on YAML. We will then head over to Ansible inventory files playbooks, and various concepts such as variables, conditionals, loops, and roles. Also, there are a lot of hands-on coding exercises, so practice, practice, and practice. So, why Ansible? In this section, we're going to discuss about what Ansible is and what it can do for you. If you already know what Ansible is and you are here for some coding exercises, feel free to skip this lecture because in this section, we're going to discuss Ansible at a very basic level to understand what it is and what it can do for you. So let's get started. Now, if you were a systems engineer or IT administrator or just anybody working in IT, you were probably involved in doing a lot of repetitive tasks in your environment, whether it be sizing and creating new hosts or virtual machines every day, applying configurations on them, patching hundreds of servers, migrations, deploying applications, or even performing security and compliance audits. All of these very repetitive tasks involves execution of hundreds of commands on hundreds of different servers, while maintaining the right sequence of events with system reboots in between and whatnot. Smart people develop scripts to automate these tasks, but that requires coding skills and regular maintenance of these scripts and a lot of time to put these scripts together on the first place. That's where Ansible comes into play. Ansible is a powerful IT automation tool that you can quickly learn. It's simple enough for everyone in IT, yet powerful enough to automate even the most complex deployments. Let's take a look at a simple use case. 
Imagine you have a number of hosts in your environment that you would like to restart in a particular order. Some of them are web servers and others are database servers. So you would like to power down the web servers first, followed by the database servers, then power up the database servers, and then the web servers. You could write an Ansible playbook to get this done in a matter of minutes and simply invoke the Ansible playbook every time you wish to restart your application. Let's take a look at a complex example. In this case, we are setting up a complex infrastructure that spans across public and private cloud and hundreds of VMs. With Ansible, you could provision VMs on public clouds like Amazon and provision private cloud in private cloud setup like VMware-based infrastructure and move on to configuring applications on those systems and set up communications between them. There are a lot of built-in modules available in Ansible that supports these kind of operations. To begin with, the best place to start learning Ansible is the Ansible documentation website. The Ansible documentation pages are comprehensive and contains all information required to get started with Ansible, and there are hundreds of examples of playbooks in these pages. Get familiar with the Ansible documentation website at docs.ansible.com. It contains information about setting up and installing Ansible, various concepts, best practices, information about different modules and guides on advanced topics, such as developing custom modules, custom strategies, etc.